Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Still on Power Machines N5. Today we are doing steam condensers. My name is Tepo. Please subscribe to my channel to make sure you keep on receiving videos like this. Make sure you click that notification button so that you will be notified every time I post a new video. So, we have already generated steam from our previous lesson, which was steam generation. We are using that steam, which is superheated steam now, to drive turbines, and uh, help, which helps us in the production of, for instance, electricity. So, in this topic, we will be looking at what happens to the steam after it has passed through the turbines. So, we have now uh, superheated steam, which passes through a turbine. And then is it uh, and then it is used to generate electricity and then now the steam after it has passed through the turbines it loses most of its momentum and its energy and then when it comes out from the turbine it comes out as wet steam no longer superheated steam and then we have a device called a condenser a condenser which is used to convert the steam into condensate, which is water. The water which is pumped by a, a, a pump to a hot whale, which is a storage. Now in the condenser, we are converting, we are converting the steam into condensate by a help of a, a cooling tower. A cooling tower provides us with a uh, cool water or cold water which will absorb the heat energy from the steam so that the steam can be converted to condensate which is water so now we know that between the the, the steam and the cooling water from the cooling tower the heat that will be lost let me write it here the heat that will be lost, heat lost by the steam, by steam, will be equals to the heat that will be gained by the water. It's equals to heat gain, gained by water. And then that gives us a formula that is like this. Mass of steam in brackets H2 minus H1. It's equals to mass of water times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. So we have mass of steam and then H2. Is equals to the edge of the steam, the enthalpy of the steam, which is edge wet. This steam after it has passed through the turbine, which means now this is edge two. And then our edge one, H one is H one as equals to this is the the enthalpy of the of the condensate. So it's H F at T C, which is the temperature of the condensate after it has been condensed. So H1 is HF at C T. Now you will be given a temperature of the condensate. Once you have the temperature of the condensate, you go to your steam table, look for the for that temperature and then the corresponding uh enthalpy FH that is your h1 and then our mass we have our mass of water our specific heat capacity our specific heat capacity when you are not given specific heat capacity we will use 4.187 kilojoules per kg kelvin and then we have change in temperature our change in temperature is T2 
minus T1. Change in temperature is the change in temperature of the water from the cooling tower. And then uh, in the condenser, there will be a mixing of sorry, there will be a mixing of air and uh, and steam. And then that is explained uh, the problem that will will rise in there because of the mixture of of the mixing of steam and uh, air. It's explained by Dalton's law, which states that. Uh, the pressure exerted by a mixture of gases or a mixture of vapor or both is equal to the sum of the pressures of each gas or vapor taken separately which means now the p the total pressure inside the condenser will be equals to the p partial a plus the p partial steam and then uh, we have another formula to calculate the P total, which is equals to BR minus VR in brackets 101 times uh, 3 as 325.73, where this is our barometer reading, and then this is our vacuum reading we will see that when we are doing a, an exercise yeah i think that's everything that we need now we are ready to do an exercise to see how do we apply um all this information in the board so i have a question paper with me here that reads as follows so question one Number one of the of, of the question paper in my hand says name two types of condensers. So we have two types of condensers. Number one, we have a jet condenser, and then we have a surface condenser. Surface condenser and the jet condenser. And then the second part of the question. It says that exhaust steam with a dryness fraction of 0 0.89 enters a condenser with a vacuum reading of 700 mmHg, which is millimeter Hg. The barometer reading is 760 millimeter Hg. The cooling, the cooling water enter the enters the condenser at 13 degrees Celsius and leaves the condenser at 30 degrees Celsius. If the condensate and air suction have a temperature of 3, if the condensate and air suction have a temperature of 34.6 degrees Celsius, calculate the following. So our data, we are told that the vacuum reading a 700 is, is 760 and then the barometer reading is 700 the temperature which is t1 is one it's 13 degrees celsius t2 it's 12 it's uh, 30 degrees celsius this is the temperature of the cooling water when it enters the the condenser and when and after when it is leaving now when it is now leaving the condenser tc is the temperature of the condensate and then we are also told that the temperature of the air suction it's also 34 degree point six degrees Celsius and then we have the first question which says calculate the mass of cooling water required per kg of steam they want us to calculate the mass of water per kg of steam meaning now that the mass of steam is 1 kg and then now we know that heat lost heat lost by steam is equals to heat gained uh, heat gained by water
And then the formulas, uh, we know that the heat lost by the steam is equal to the mass of steam, H1, sorry, it's H2, minus H1. And then it's equal to mass of water times the specific heat capacity of water, specific heat capacity, times the change in temperature. Now, when we look, the mass of steam we have, we are given. The mass of, uh, this is the, oh, the mass of water we are given, then the enthalpy, which is H2, we are not given, but we know that H2 is equals to H wet at PT. So, first we must calculate our PT, which uh, we have the formula for it, which is equals to PR, which is the parameter reading, our 760. No? This is like this. This is the parameter, and then this is the vacuum. And then we have our VR times 101.325 divided by 760. And then we have our values 760 minus 700 times 101.325 divided by 760 which will give us a pressure of uh, 7.999 which is equivalent to 8 kilopascal and then now we have our PT PT Let's write it in this PT is equal to 8 kilopascal. We no longer need this. We know that our H wet is equal to HF plus the dryness fraction HFG. And then we know that the value of FH and the value of FHG we will get it by using our pressure, which is 8 kilopascal. And then from the steam table, I got that my values are for Fg is 174 plus the dryness fraction, which were given as... Uh, where's the dryness fraction? I didn't write it, but we are given from the statement. They say exhaust steam with a dryness fraction of... Uh, with a dryness fraction of 0 0.89 sorry it's 0 0.89 0 0.89 so our dryness fraction is 0 0.89 and then I got my value for FF, FHG as 2403 and then we calculate I got my value as F H wet is two three one two point six seven kilojoules per kg. And then we are done with H2. We are looking for H1. We know that H1 is equals to F H at the con the temperature of the condensate. And then we know that the temperature of the condensate is 34.6. You go, you go again to your steam table. Look for this temperature, which is 34.6 degrees. And then from that row, extract the value of FH. And then I got my value of FH as... Uh, my FH, I got it as 1, 4, 5. 145 kilo kilojoules per kg and then mass of water we have oh that's what we are looking for specific heat capacity the specific heat capacity if you are not given 
we are using specific heat capacity we are using 4.187 kilojoules per kg kelvin if you are not given you are using this value unless you are given another value that is not uh, the same as this one and then our change in temperature change in temperature let's calculate it here our change in temperature which is equals to t2 minus t1 is equals to our t2 it's 30 minus 13 which is our t2 and then we can now from this formula let me write write my h wet here h wet my h wet because i don't have enough space h wet this is the value of my h wet it's two three one two point six seven kilojoules per kg now i can erase this and from this i am going to make the my the mass of water the subject of the formula mw is equals to mass of steam in bracket h2 minus h1 and then uh, i say specific heat capacity times the change in temperature and then the mass my mass of steam is 1 kg times in bracket we know that our h uh, h2 it's h wet and then my h wet it's equals to two three one two three one two point six seven minus my h1 which is fh at the content the condensate temperature one seven one four five and then my specific heat capacity is 4.187 times my change in temperature 30 minus 1 3 which i got my mass of or oh, water as 30 0.45 that's 454 kg per kg of steam per kg of steam so that is the first part of our question and then there is question number two where they say Calculate the mass of air extracted per kg of steam. Given that our value of R is equals to 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.287 kg per kilo, kilojoules per kg Kelvin. And the suction temperature of the air is equals to 34.6 uh, degrees Celsius. And then now let's erase this. So we are now told to calculate the mass of air. And then we know that air is an ideal gas, meaning that we can use the ideal gas equation MRT is equal to PV from thermodynamics of gases to calculate for the mass of the air. So we are given R from this question and then we are given the T. But we know that in an ideal gas equation, our temperature, whenever we are using it, we must first convert it from degree Celsius to Kelvin by adding 273, which will give us uh, 307.6 Kelvins. Now we have our T. And then our pressure, the pressure that we will be using in this case, we know that PT is equal to P partial A 
plus P partial steam. The pressure that we are looking for in this formula, because we are calculating for the mass of air, is this one. So we are not using the total pressure. First, we must calculate, we know this is 8 kilopascal. We have uh, already calculated in from the previous uh, question. And then we know that uh, P partial steam, we can get it from the steam table at the temperature of 34.6 degrees Celsius. So you go to the steam table, look for this temperature and then extract the corresponding pressure in which uh, in my case I got it in this case I got it as a uh, 5.5 and then this is our p partial a and then our p partial a is equals to 8 minus 5.5 which give us 2.5 kilopascal now we have the pressure we now look we are now looking for the volume the volume of wet steam in the condenser will be equal to the volume of the air. So if you have the volume of wet steam, you can use it as a substitute for the volume of air. And if you have the volume of air, you can also use it uh, to substitute and use it uh, in the other way around. So since we cannot now calculate the volume of air, we can calculate the volume of steam the volume of steam and then use it as a volume of the air so we know that v wet it's equals to vg it's equals to x vg x v g at our temperature which is 30 4.6 so we know the dryness fraction uh, is equals to 0. Point 89 times our VG at 34 degrees Celsius. I got uh, from the same table, I got it as a uh, 25.77, which gives us a, a, an answer which is 22.935 uh, kilo meter cubed. And then now we can, because now we have all the values, we can go to our table, to our equation and calculate the value of M. First make M the subject of the formula, and then we get PV divided by RT. Substitute 2.5. Uh, where is 2.5? This is 2.5 times the our volume, which is 2, 2.935. And then divided by R, our R, we are given R. Uh, didn't write it, but they said R is equal to 0 0.288. Kilojoules per kg, Kelvin. And then 0 0.288 and then our t this is our t it's equals to zero is three zero seven point six it's equals to and then i got it as zero point six four nine kg uh, per kg of steam, per kg of steam, of steam, and then that is the end of our question.